News 25 is brought to you by Bees Embroidery and Garment Printing. Specializing in custom and personalized decoration of gifts, garments, and more. Call 775-727-9444. News is also brought to you by J.K. Nelson Law. Call 727-9900 today for your free consultation. If you need a lawyer, you need Nelson. Tonight, the county looks into purchasing a new police vehicle, and a local man is arrested for assault. News 25 starts now. You're watching KPVM News 25 with Deanna O'Donnell. News 25. Local coverage you can count on. And the county says yes to new police cruisers. It's Wednesday, April 3rd. I'm Deanna O'Donnell. The Board of County Commissioners approved a five-year loan for the amount not to exceed $950 to purchase 20 to 25 police vehicles for the Nye County Sheriff's Office. The purchasing of new vehicles for the Nye County Sheriff Office's police force is up for discussion. The current police vehicles, says Sheriff Sharon Worley, are unsafe to drive and that 20 more vehicles were going to be pulled. Yeah, Mr. Chair, I have a couple of questions if I could ask Savannah sure. before we get started. So I had, um, I had a very interesting conversation. So we're going to focus on purchasing 20 to 25 vehicles for the Sheriff's Department for our law enforcement, correct? Well, we're going to assess our fleet before we move forward with any acquisitions. And the goal is to most of these vehicles be associated with the police office. Um, we may have to take care of a couple other vehicles, but the majority of these vehicles will be going to Knight County Sheriff's Office. Now, um, I know you're really good at doing the numbers and things like that. Sure. Why, why don't we have a list of what we're even contemplating? What are we going to buy? We don't have a list of that. Well, we're looking at, um, and all of that information will is uh, has been presented in past meetings, and unfortunately, you weren't a commissioner at that point in time, so I do apologize. It's not included in this item. We typically purchase uh, vehicles, excuse me, lease vehicles from uh, dealers that we can see service in Pahrump, so Dodge or Chevy. The sheriff's new vehicle is a Chevy Tahoe, whereas we're likely going to be focusing on uh, Dodge units for the deputies, detectives, and canine vehicles. Where are we at with the sheriff's department? I know they've been getting requisitions, uh, the uh, surplus from Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. Those vehicles typically have anywhere from 70, 80,000 miles on them. Correct. And we get them at roughly, what, $6,500 a pop? It depends on the vehicle that's available, the vehicles that are available. In some cases, the sheriff's officer, they're able to um, get trucks from a metro, and they are between sixty-five and seventy-five hundred dollars. And in some cases, they get Crown Vicks or similar vehicles for between twenty-five and thirty-five hundred dollars. Right, but if if uh, just simple math here, mm -hmm. I got sixty-five hundred dollars a vehicle times thirty vehicles, which I know the sheriff would love to have thirty updated mm -hmm. vehicles with. A half to a third of the mileage. Yeah, that cost me 195,000. You're asking me for five times the amount of money. Right. Absolutely. So, so where are you working with the sheriff on making that happen? Well, that's actually an another part of the program. We are still working with Metro to replace uh, Knight County Sheriff's Office vehicles in conjunction with this. The Sheriff's Office fleet is in such bad shape that we have to attack this from both ends. There's not enough funding available to take out the size loan that we need to take care of the sheriff's needs for vehicles. Okay. The, uh, the biggest problem that, uh, that we faced when I got here was the fact that almost 20% of our vehicles were getting ready to be pulled offline uh, the month, well, the, either the first month or the second month I was here, I don't remember. Uh, I had uh, the shop deadline two of them, said that they're absolutely unsafe to drive and told me that there'd be another 20 that they were gonna pull. Mm -hmm. Hearing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Oh, five to zero. We're good to go. Thank, Thank you. you, Sheriff. Thank, Thank you, you, Commissioners. And a new piece of equipment to more effectively patch roads following the recent rains will be put to work soon. We are uh, working on a drop dead date 
God, for, God forbid Mother Nature throws any snow in the northern part of the state, we'll have to back up and put plows back on, sanders back in. But Be careful. I'm here right now, and I'll give her my key and then drive the truck and the trailer down, okay? I drive stick shift. I, I know how to do that. Stand there. Okay. Um, but we are, uh, it's, it's currently out right now, working out any bugs that it may have gathered up through the winter time. So they're out there testing it and running it through its paces uh, to make sure when it does come down on April 9th. It'll actually be there on the 8th, but we're going to invite you to come out on the 9th. And more than likely, we'll be attacking a portion of Charleston Park uh, just west of Higley. It's a really bad section up there by the Chevy dealer and up towards the TV station. And when then are you scheduled to bring it back to the north? Never. Hey, we just got it. Never. Wait a minute. So where's Commissioner the other one? Wakeman, where's, where's the second one? <laughs> the second one is in the works. Keep in mind that you made an obligation to the folks on uh, Sunny Courts Road. And that's and not for this machine at all, Commissioner. Okay. This, the uh, uh, that was another one of the announcements that I'd like to to bring to you as right. well today. That we brought the chipper up to uh, Tonopah last week, and we're going to be running it through its paces in the very near future for those obligations that we all committed to last year. I have a few few comments and I have a question. Where are we at with uh, the cold uh, the cold mix the patch? You, you were informing me not too long ago that we were having issues acquiring that. Yes, there's uh, uh, been some maintenance going on the uh, asphalt plant in Pahrump, uh where we obtain our, our cold mix from. And uh, it was down for a good 30 days. Uh, they brought it back up. Uh, we're able to complete a couple of jobs. And then something transpired where it's down again. Uh, I, I haven't any recent updates for you on that regard, but as soon as they get it up, uh, we have a standing order to get some more cold mix. And uh, there's uh, three overlay projects that we're going to start as soon as we get that going. Mm -hmm. um, um, so uh, Prump Valley from Gamebird down to Mance is in dire need of some help. Um, Leslie from SR-160 back towards the west, the really bad section in there. We're going to try to, to button up. Um, let me see. There's another one. Uh, Ranch Street going into Crystal has some really bad sections in it that we're going to try to, to get taken care of in the very near future. So um, thanks for bringing that to my attention. Um, um, I have to ask the public's consideration for going through those zones while we do those skin patches. It's kind of tedious. Each one of them should take in the neighborhood of about a day to do at least a half a mile section. So uh, sections like Prompt Valley from Game Bird to Mance will take about two days to, to overlay that. We'll Much more news after this break. You're watching KPVM News 25. Local coverage you can count on. Welcome back. Well, in today's Business First Brief, Angela Miles talks about the cost of groceries. Topping our news, Whole Foods will be cutting prices today. Amazon announced that it's lowering prices at its Whole Foods supermarket this week. The Wall Street Journal reported that more than 500 products will see reduced prices, focusing on produce and meat. Avocado toast and margaritas could be costing more as President Trump is threatening to close the Mexican border. The Foreign Trade Council warns that the impact to consumers would be immediate and massive. Any interruption on the border could also impact the auto, apparel, and textile sectors as well. The FDA sets its first hearing on CBD additives in May as the agency looks at legalizing the cannabis compound to food and drink. The Food and Drug Administration wants input on how it can legalize CBD, and the FDA will host a public hearing on the additives on May 31st. Bitcoin soared to its highest in almost five months on Tuesday, pulling smaller cryptocurrencies up with it after major orders by an anonymous buyer set off a frenzy of computer-driven trading, analysts said. Bitcoin had traded above $5,000. Thanks so much. A senior citizen says that she was assaulted by an individual who forced his way into her home. Patrol members be advised.
William McDermott has been arrested for domestic battery, abuse of an older or vulnerable person, home invasion, trespass, injuring or tampering a vehicle, and a habitual criminal. According to the Nye County Sheriff's Office Declaration of Arrest, on March 26, deputies were dispatched to a home on South Hawkins Way in reference to a domestic disturbance. Police made contact with the victim, who was identified as a 72-year-old female. Pahrump Valley Fire and Rescue medics were also on scene treating the victim for injury injuries sustained during an altercation. Deputies say when speaking with the victim, she said that she had been sitting in her recliner watching television when she heard someone trying to get inside her home. She said that an individual identified as William McDermott and her son-in-law broke through the door. In fact, the victim told police that William had forcibly kicked in the main door three times, which caused the door frame to break and swing open. That's when the individual said that she called 911. While sitting in her recliner, she said that Williams spun her around and then hit her in the chest with a closed fist. The victim states, according to police, that after approximately five to six minutes of an argument with William, he eventually left. McDermott was then located at a neighbor's house on the front porch. Police say there was also damage to a red Buick on the property that was owned by the victim. They said that William had allegedly thrown rocks at the vehicle the night before. Deputies spoke with McDermott, who they said said was non-compliant. Uh, William McDermott was taken into custody and transported to the Nye County Sheriff's Office Detention Center. After a background check was conducted, police say that they learned that this individual had multiple felony convictions for attempted burglary and possession of a controlled substance with intent to sell. The report says that this would be McDermott's third and fourth felony charges. Police also add that they had contact with McDermott the night before and he was trespassed from the main residence on this property. And the owners of two vehicles had their items returned after officers located the reportedly stolen van driving near Petrick Park. Steve Morrow has been arrested for a grand larceny of an auto, possession of a stolen vehicle, and an arrest warrant. According to the Nye County Sheriff's Office Declaration of Arrest, on March 14th, Nye County Sheriff's Office dispatched deputies to West Horn Street here in Pahrump in reference to a stolen vehicle. The victim said that their white caravan with no license plate had been stolen by Steve Morrow. In fact, they said that Morrow had borrowed it two weeks prior and never returned the van. Deputies say that they located the white caravan without a license plate on Basin turning onto Dahlia Street. They conducted a traffic stop on the vehicle. Police made contact with the driver and only occupant identified as Steve Morrow. He said that he was going to see his kid and then headed to the courts. Officers then explained to Steve that the vehicle was reportedly stolen. They said that Morrow answered that he didn't understand why. When running Morrow's information through the Nye County Sheriff's Office dispatch, his name returned with two warrants attached out of Clark County. Morrow was then arrested and transported to the Nye County Sheriff's Office Detention Center. Digital photographs of the caravan were taken at the scene. Inside the van was a red Honda motorcycle that returned stolen as well. The motorcycle was allegedly taken from the front of an apartment complex in Las Vegas between March 10th and March 13th. Deputies observed that the ignition and fuel key holes of the motorcycle were both damaged and the front wheel was locked to the left. We'll have your court report and much more news right after this. News 25 is brought to you by Bill and Robin Law, injury attorneys. Injured, need money? Get Bill and Robin, your local Pahrump injury attorneys. Well, a convicted child molester has been sentenced. Unit Gentry has that story in today's court report. In this week's court report, George Allen Prentice has now been sentenced to a minimum of four years behind bars. This after a guilty plea was entered for the charge of lewdness with a child under 14 by that local man arrested after admitting to police that he was inappropriately touching a female minor for the purpose of sexual conduct. During Prentice's sentencing hearing, the court outlined the case history and reviews the pre-sentence investigation report including the recommendations. Prentice's defense attorney, Brent Percival, reviews the defendant's psychosexual evaluation report and argues in support of the defendant being placed on probation.
Attorney Percival also outlines the defendant's lack of criminal history and requests the court follow the recommendations of the division and place Prentice on probation. A rep for the state then calls the first victim to the stand. The witness is sworn in by the clerk and testifies that she is 11 years old. Then the witness continues to testify about her relationship to the defendant and states that she called him Pops. Furthermore, the witness testifies about the incident that occurred and how what Prentice did affected her. The young witness then recites a letter she wrote for that court hearing, testifying about what she would like to see happen to the defendant. When done, that witness is excused. Then the state calls another female to the stand who is also sworn in by the court clerk. That witness testifies that the victim in this case is her daughter and outlines how this incident has affected her daughter's demeanor. The second witness then continues to testify about how this incident has affected her entire family. Then she also recites a letter that she prepared for that hearing and begs the court to sentence Prentice to the maximum possible sentence before being excused. The rep for the state then outlines the details of the incident that occurred, opposes probation, and argues in support of Prentice being sent to prison for the maximum possible sentence. Finally, Prentice addresses the court himself, and the court admonishes the defendant in regards to his actions, then sentences Prentice to a total of $178 in fees and 48 to 120 months with 283 days credit for time served. The court also orders Prentice to pay for counseling for that young victim in this case. You might recall that last summer, an area deputy responded to reports of a female who had been touched in the privates by a neighbor named Pops, who was later identified as George Prentice. Police say the young girl left home looking for her friends, but they were not at home, so she went over to Pops' trailer to earn some chore money by doing the dishes. While there, Prentice told the young girl, I will show you mine if you show me yours. Then the victim says Prentice placed his hand on her vagina and patted it with his hand. She then ran across the street and told her father what happened. This has been your court report. I'm Unette Gentry for News 25. Thanks so much, Unette. Well, Pets Are Worth Saving has a thrift store called Thrifty Paws right there on Gamebird Road. We spoke to Teresa about the store and rescue animals up for adoption. Thrifty Paws is a thrift store that funds Pets Who Are Saving. Pets Who Are Saving is an uh, animal wellness group. We pull animals from uh, shelters that are on euthanized list, rehabilitate them, find them homes. We also help with community animals that have been in an accident or have an emergency. We help them with that. And Thrifty Paws, the thrift store, covers the expenses from all that plus donations. We have animals for adoption. We have dogs and cats. Right now we have several different kinds of dogs and we have one cat right now. Senior to Senior is uh, a program that we put into effect to adopt older dogs to elderly people because they both need uh, love from one another, companionship. We help pay the regular vet bills and stuff if needed and supply food if needed. We waive the adoption fees on a Senior to Senior. You can donate. Time. You can donate items, you can donate whatever you have, like from an old roach. A lot of us come from garage sales mm -hmm. that they couldn't sell, and then they bring them rest here. So you can donate food supplies at the store, mm -hmm. and it goes all to the animals. We have a foster program. Uh, we have one dog out on foster. If you want to be a foster, come on down at uh, 2031 East Gamebird. Our hours are Monday through Saturday, 9 to 5. And talk to us about foster. We foster cats or dogs. You can also call 775 mm -hmm. 253-5051. And we're on Facebook at uh, Pets Are With Safety. News 46 Weather Cam is brought to you by Glenn Lerner Injury Attorney's Office in Pahrump. In a wreck, need a check? Call 702-877-1500. I want to take a look outside and see what is going on. It was a little bit windy earlier today. We can see some clouds in the sky. We'll find out more about our forecast right after this break. News 25 weather is brought to you by Dairy Council of Nevada. The splash of cream in your coffee. The dollop of sour cream on your burrito. 
The melted toasty cheese on your pizza. Undeniably delicious. Undeniably dairy. Enjoy what's real. Hello and welcome back to News 25. I'm Michael Donahue with today's temperatures. In Las Vegas, we had a high of 78 and a low of 57. Death Valley, 85, 63. 74, 52 in Amargosa. 70, 49 in Beatty. A high of 61, a low of 40 in Goldfield. 58, 39 in Tonopah. 61, 38 in Carson City. In Fallon and Fernley, both at a high of 61 and a low of 41. Today in Pahrump, mostly sunny skies, a high of 73 degrees. Winds out of the west southwest at 5 miles per hour with 23% humidity in our sunrise at 627 a.m. For tonight, it's currently 72 degrees outside with mostly cloudy skies. Our low tonight will be 53 degrees. We're going to have winds out of the southeast at 7 miles per hour, humidity at 38%, and 707 p.m. for our sunset. Looking ahead to our seven day, nothing but really cloudy skies all through next Tuesday. We're expecting to clear up with sunny skies next Wednesday. Temperature-wise, we're going to start venturing up into those 80s. On Thursday through Saturday, our high temperatures are mainly going to be in about those low to mid-70s, just between 70 and 75 degrees. On Sunday through Tuesday, we're going to be up in those mid-80s, just between 82 and 85. And then next Wednesday, we're going to slip down just a little bit to 72 degrees. Our overnights are kind of bouncing around just a little bit. We're mainly just going to see them in about those low to high 50s, with the exception of Friday, where we'll be down at 49. And Monday, we're just going to scratch the surface of those 60s. So now, if you can't make it home in time to catch the news live on TV, make sure to check out our Facebook page every night at 5 p.m., where you can catch the news live and any other updates on the go. And now we're going to throw it back to the desk with Deanna. Thanks so much, Michael. Well, that does it for our broadcast. I'm Deanna O'Donnell. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Good night.